What if I told you that it only takes 90 days to completely change your life? If you're anything like me, you probably have had days or weeks on end where you are absolutely frustrated with yourself. No matter how hard you seem to push yourself, if you even can, it feels as if you're not making any progress on any of your meaningful endeavors. And it almost feels as if your life is an invisible cage that you can't break out of. Honestly, sometimes I just want to burn everything to the fucking ground. Get that reset, just start from zero and see if that changes anything like the trajectory or whatever else. With all of the frustrations I carried, I found myself constantly wanting to change as much as I could about me. I still do sometimes to this day. And I would hope that if I did exactly that, that it would change my life. Turns out, I was right, and it only takes about 90 days to drive the trajectory of your life skywards. All it takes is a little bit of true intention followed by a bit of real effort. And the best part is that you can repeat this 90-day cycle to continually and exponentially compound your efforts. Here's how I do it. All life-changing transformations begin with knowing yourself to as much of a degree as you possibly can. So write it all down in every relevant aspect of your life with as much specific detail you can muster, the character traits, the finances, the ambitions, the intellect, etc. Write it all down. Where are you right now versus where would you like to be in the future? There's two reasons why here. Number one is because when you write it all down, it allows your mind to go into this deeper flow state. You're able to more deeply examine the thoughts that you're coming up with. Number two is because once you've written it all down, you'll be able to much more clearly see the difference, the distance between who you are right now and the version of yourself that you see in the future. And being aware of that distance, knowing clearly what's in that distance will allow you to be better prepared, to be able to better confront whatever life might throw at you. You'll basically have gained this sort of first attacker's advantage on life because you'll go into every situation knowing already how you might engage it. Of course, relative to who you envision yourself to be. You know, there was a time where I could not express myself well. I could not speak well at all. And because of that, I don't think I was ever taken as seriously or as understood as I ever truly wanted to be. And the truth is, is that at the time, I don't think anyone could have understood me simply because I couldn't express myself well. And that fucking sucked because no matter how assertive I was, it felt like no one heard me. And so after some deep self-examination, I aimed to become the Anuj that could fully articulate his thoughts, that could captivate a person's mind with his speaking, kind of similarly inspire images in your mind as if you were reading a good book, and maybe potentially one day become so well-spoken that I'm invited to offer massive knowledge and perspective on high-level podcasts. And since I knew that was where I wanted to go with myself, whenever life threw me a challenge in that realm, I could make the conscious effort to use that as an opportunity to improve myself in that way instead. So, for example, I'm with a client or I'm at an interview. I could capture their attention by showing them the depth of my thoughts in a very concise way. If I was in discussion or I was in an argument, I would always be in a calm demeanor. And I could use the silence in between mid-conversation to kind of gather my thoughts without the ums and ahs and to then continue to fully illustrate my points. Ever since I've made that decision, ever since I've become aware of that distance, I genuinely, for the most part, have not gone into conversations not already knowing how I might engage it. And more importantly, I have never had any difficulty nowadays expressing myself to someone. And that is a fucking nice feeling, having unlocked that skill set for myself. So anyways, if you do this examination thoroughly, you should have more than a few examples of your own. You'll effectively have created a vision for yourself. And within those realms relative to your vision, you will have the potential to have a first attacker's advantage on life within them. Though the key here is that you pick only one to three of those things that would have the most impact on your life currently. And it's only those one to three things that you will focus on so that they have your full investment for the next 90 days. You know, over the course of my life, it's kind of been reaffirmed again and again and again that no matter how grand your vision is, it's only a dream if you don't have an action plan behind it. Now, most of us, whether we have a grand vision, a dream or whatever, 
lack the discipline or the accountability or even just the will to carry it out, to execute. And at first it's because you might think you're lazy. You might not even believe in yourself. Sometimes even worse, we believe in traits about ourselves that are completely detrimental. And honestly, fuck believing lesser about yourself. Because if you really think about it, it doesn't serve you in any way. If you do believe yourself in that way, in that lesser form, it's probably because you've incorrectly positioned yourself in life with the habits, the tendencies, and traits that you currently have. But that's kind of the thing here. It's only incorrect, meaning that you can correct for it. It's all about that positioning, putting yourself through a series of motions that can be unquestionably completed by you. You need to do the simple things, the easy things that are going to move you towards that vision of yours. So refuse to spend any notion or any time in sorrow, in feeling bad for yourself or believing lesser and re-strategize because you need to become the war strategist of your life. And I mean, it's like your life. You get to choose how you spend your time on the planet. And that's taking it out a little bit further, having that grand picture. But I think in terms of repositioning, Jordan Peterson said it best. That's the first thing that people do wrong. They say, well, I don't like to have, follow a schedule. It's like, well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? Well, I, sh I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this. You know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like so I'm going to show you how you might set up your own calendar to reposition your life strategically and systematically by showing you how I set up my first 90 day cycle. My goals at the time were to become an intelligent speaker, to have a Greek God physique, and then to become an exceptional storyteller through video. And the key here is literally to make up the schedule that you would want to have. Now, keeping my personal goals in mind, the first thing I knew that I wanted to do was wake up early and go to the gym. That is the only thing I wanted to do before everyone else was awake. So I decided that I would wake up every day at 5 a.m. Wake up slash get ready. Cool. And I would spend time at the gym from around 5.30 to 7.30, just depending on whatever workout I was doing. So this is my gym session. Gym session will extend to 7.30. We're gonna color code it just to make it a little bit more clear. And then I would come back and from around 7.30 to 8.30 is eating breakfast you know, taking a shower and kind of just getting ready for the rest of the day. Now, I also knew within that was where I could kind of squeeze what I would call vocality practice. Vocality practice is where I would just kind of speak as articulately and as enunciated as I can to myself in the mirror or I would record it, whatever it is. But I would just tell myself for at least two and a half minutes 2.5 minutes to five minutes vocality practice to just do that in the space of getting ready on whatever topic would come to my mind. And that would be the first kind of coming together of my morning. Right after that was when I would go into my deep session. And this is typically where I would do my own personal work because in the morning I didn't have any clients. So from around Nine to one was my first deep work session. And this is where I would do my YouTube video scripting, editing, and any other means of content, basically. Stretch that out to around 1 p.m. We'll make these yellow. Deep work sessions are going to be yellow. And then right after that was, of course, lunch, because we need to keep those calories up for the Greek God physique. So count calories as well. Let's actually adjust breakfast to have that reminder. Eating breakfast, edit that, cool. Now the first half of the day is done, but after lunch is typically when client work for me comes in and that's filming for them, that's editing their videos or giving them brand consulting. So deep work session two, deep work 
session two. And this is client slash freelance work. And that would go till about, I would say like seven or 8 p.m. So let's just extend it to 8 p.m. Once again, we'll color this yellow to kind of just all match if I could get it to click. Cool. And that takes up the whole mid section of the day. Now, when I come back, I kind of do this wind down sort of thing. First, of course, is dinner because we're hungry. So dinner <laughs> count calories. This is where I would get the last calories of the day. I was eating around and I still do actually right now. 3,200 to 3,500 calories a day. I was on a bulk, still am on that bulk. And then after dinner, this is where I kind of focus more on doing productive tasks that would help me towards like the exceptional storytelling and of course the intelligent speaking. So I would actually read after eating. I would read, I would aim for at least one chapter read at least one chapter in a book. We'll make this red. And then after reading, what I would do is actually journal. And this would be full articulate sentences. And the reason for that would be so that it would also help through writing with my speaking. And once again, me being able to deeply go through my thoughts to potentially help me with storytelling through video as well. And a lot of the times, honestly, my journaling sessions weren't some deep reflective kind of, you know, overview of my life. They were more just criticisms of what I could do better for the next day and why I should do better or whatever else. And last but not least, but I would aim so that I'm awake by 5 a.m. to sleep around 10 or 11 p.m. And that right there is pretty much my day and actually has been the basis of my days for the last two years. So yeah, that was how I set up my calendar to reposition myself into a better place. And once you've created your calendar, adhere to it to the best of your ability, but do not hold yourself to perfect execution because what you'll end up finding out is that over the next few days, you'll probably are going to have to make some tweaks. Maybe you don't like waking up at 5 a.m. and working out, so you move things around. Maybe around 1 p.m. in the day, you need to take a nap to regain energy. The point is, is that relative to yourself, you'll be able to account for life happening. And as you do, the more that life throws chaos at you, you'll be able to fight against it and maintain your schedule. And over time, you'll graduate from viewing or adjusting your calendar from every few hours to every single hour to every 30 minutes to every few minutes. And as you do, your true calendar will reveal itself to you, how you actually like to navigate through the day and your ability to actually maintain that schedule and stick to it will become much more concrete. So keep going and that vision you have of yourself will continue to come closer and closer. And as you endure, as you build through these first 90 days, you're going to have to let go of who you once were and give your full heart to who you envision yourself to be. Because at first, it's going to be difficult. You're going to combat, you're going to war with all of your past experiences, with all of your frustrations and your faults, without even knowing just yet how capable you truly are. But as the days go on, as you build that momentum by completing those daily commitments, you're going to start noticing that you are believing in that forward progress, in those shifts in your life that you are making because you have now stacked evidence that you can and will do what you set out to do. You know, it comes to mind that one of the great poets of our time, Lil Wayne, once said, they said choose wisely and that's why I was chosen. And the way that I had interpreted this was that the best investment you can ever make is in yourself. And that in every decision where you choose yourself with strength will be a choice that you never regret. And as you continue to strengthen that deepening belief in yourself, allow yourself to become unrecognizable to the world. Let no one or no thing change your momentum. Be with your friends and family, but never let that be an excuse for missing the gym. Watch your favorite TV show, but never let it forgo your reading. Appreciate and learn from all that you've been through, but fall so deeply in love with who you are becoming that the past is really no more than just an origin story. Do that 
and life will completely change in your favor. That's how I did it. And I believe that you can too. And so I want to bring you back to that original list of where you had written everything down of where are you now versus where would you like to be? After the first 90 days with those first one to three things, you've probably achieved what you set out to do, or you've made the habits for maintaining progress in those particular things second nature, which is fucking fantastic because this is where the true glory of this 90 day process truly begins. You get to choose the next one to three things on that list, which have probably evolved because of who you've become in the first 90 day cycle and run the cycle again. You get to tap into this massive upward spiral and let it be a way of life. And so I actually have my 90 day cycles posted up on the front of my door in my room because I constantly want to have the reminder that I'm on the move for those 90 days. You can kind of see that there's three specific goals that I'm aiming for and each row has been every three months. So between these and the most current ones that are on my wall right now, I've been doing this for pretty much a year. And it's kind of crazy because who I saw at the end of these papers is now becoming more and more of a reality. And the ones at the end of this paper, the version of me at the end of these three months and these three months and these three months has already been here. And we're just gonna keep fucking going. You know, just like anyone else, I used to think that completely changing my life, becoming that better version, that cooler version of myself was only a dream. But now I realize that I just didn't know how to get there. That's really all it was. And as it turns out, those desires to change ourselves shouldn't be something that is looked at with disdain or some sort of distaste, but rather as hopes that should be explored in order to discover those paths to becoming those cooler and better versions of ourselves. We forget that all life-changing transformations begin with knowing ourselves, even if only a little bit. And then those transformations themselves are completed by fulfilling those wishes, those desires, with a course of action, a plan. And I know this is going to sound so incredibly cliche, but the secret truly is that you improve every day by at least 1%, because in that process, you're going to realize that life does not progress linearly. So you do this for 90 days and your life tends to change completely. Do this for multiple 90 day cycles and you will become so absolutely unrecognizable compared to who you once were. And I think that that journey is one absolutely and utterly worth venturing. So I hope to see you on the other side of it. Anyways, feel free to subscribe. If you liked this video, you're probably going to like this video too. So check it out. And as always, let's skyrocket.